You can have ELISA testing done. They'll do that. That's about 30 to 60 percent, but it's usually false negatives that come from that. That's right. There's a PCR test, but again, they're looking for the Borrelia, and they're West out of the blood as out of the blood as fast as they can be, so they're hard to find. Western blood is usually the most reliable, but we do not go by the CDC guidelines that they have. It's too limited. Um, and you need to have someone that can absolutely be able to read that Western blot. When it comes back, they have something called bands on it. Yes. The doctor needs to know which bands to look for and then how to read those. And then there's IgM and IgG. Some of those show it, it's an acute case. Some of them say, hey, this has been in your system for a long time. You might have Western blot done for something else and they come back and go, oh, you've got Lyme disease. It means that you were probably bit years ago and didn't know that you have that in your system. Yep. So it's important that you um, get good testing. They do have a culture now for the Borrelia, but it takes three months. So you can get that culture done. If you haven't been treated yet, you can get that culture done, but it's gonna be three months before you get that culture back, but it's very accurate. Yep. They do have an eye spot test. Um, that one's about 80% accurate. That one's out of Wisconsin, but I don't know that your local clinic is doing that one. Sometimes you can request and get your labs drawn through your local clinic. Uh, Dr. Opitz would be able to explain yep. this to you, but you can get whatever labs you want done, just so you know. And if you've got a doctor that will order them, you should be able to go to your local lab to get them drawn with that order. Yeah. And your doctor will order it for you. And then they can send it out. Sometimes they have all the packaging and you get it drawn, they get the make sure they get the right tubes, and then they give it back to you and then you do the mailer. And a lot of times there's a special way to do that. And yes, if you bring your dog in for Lyme disease, they'll tell you in 15 minutes that it's Lyme disease. Oh, Isn't that interesting? But, um, as far as treatment, sadly there's no silver bullet. We're still looking for that. Every body's different. Um, I could have one organism, or I could have a bunch of organisms, and so and my body can respond differently. I can, so there's a lot of things that come in. So it needs to be individualized. It can't be this works for you and this works for me. They need to know what organisms there are. They need to know how many, how infected am I? I had a lot of them, and I had a lot of them, though, if that makes sense. So you need to find out if it's early, disseminated, or late, because that's going to depend on how you're going to be treated. I was able to avoid a pick line, and having pick lines right now is a big one. So they yep. leave a needle in you, so you can self-administer through IV, the different antibiotics. Mm -hmm. I was on uh, combination antibiotics uh, by mouth about um, seven months was the last time. Oh, and, um, so I have, I have drawn from traditional medicine to alternative medicine, and I have a doctor that's very supportive because you do whatever you need to do to be <laughs> to stay alive. So I have do have some experience on some of the alternative things as well. Um, but again, I qualify alternative. There's alternative, and then as a believer, there's alternative methods that I would caution you against getting into. So if you ever want to have that conversation, let me know. Yeah. Um, again, it depends on your pre-existing conditions. I had pre-existing conditions already that were limiting me, so this was just adding on top of that. Allergies, we end up with lots of allergies. That's another um, symptomatic clue. If people are having increasing allergies or not able to eat certain That's right. things. And again, treatment will also depend on what body systems are involved. Again, my doctor was like, you know, after we get through a certain point of treatment, then we'll see how much your body recovers, and then we'll see what just is broken and not recoverable, and then we'll have to fill in. So some of the meds are for that. For those of you who have experienced the Herxheimer reaction, oh. this is your picture. Herxheimer reaction is particular to syphilis and Lyme disease. That's where it got its name from the doctor, Herxheimer, who after about two weeks into treatment, you are going to die, and some <laughs> have died from the Herx reaction yep. you've had. I ended up in the emergency room with mine, and the doctor had no clue in the emergency room, but it was a Herxheimer reaction. 
because at that certain point the antibiotics had to hit, and if you had a high, or high organism load, your body is overwhelmed with this die-off of organisms. Yep. And so all of a sudden now your immune system is seeing these organisms it hasn't seen before, and it completely goes into overload. And I, I, I couldn't breathe, I had pain in my chest, and it felt like I'd been hit by a Mack truck, and I thought again I was going to die. And um, so my husband and family, we all said our goodbyes again. <laughs> oh, I can tell you how many times we said our goodbyes. Um, and uh, anyway, ended up with a Herxheimer reaction. Some don't end up in the emergency room, um, but it's a hallmark. If there is a treatment and you have this Herxheimer reaction, know that that's a definitive. You do have lung disease. That's and right. And if you have a loved one that you're walking through this with, it's good for you to know to be watching about those, that two-week point, especially if you have a young child. You don't want to scare the child about it, but you want to be mindful. So if you need to do intervention or medical care for them, you need to be aware that could happen. Okay, treatment options and goals. There's, um, of course, antibiotics. Usually today it should be a combination of antibiotics. There's homeopathy, naturopathy, vitamin C, um, cell treatment is right. There's essential oils. Um, in part, and, yeah. and more. There isn't any one thing. There's usually a combination of things. And the big thing is, it's got to be what works for you. If you think all alternative medicine is hoopy doo and you're never going to go there, that's okay. It's important though that you get the medical um, medical medicines that you need because it's not going to do anything for you. Either if you don't believe it, you don't think it's going to work, and you're not getting it from a trustworthy source. So I'm not saying one is better than another or whatever, but I'm just saying there is an array of things out there to help support your body. So um, helpful to have a team. Um, I've had to have physical therapy. You might need to have a nutritionalist. You have your regular doctor. You should have a nurse that's really good at holding your hand and answering all those questions that you have. Ultimately, you need to have that. I was so deconditioned. I just finished um, six months of physical therapy, and she could have kept going, but, um, but on that, I, I ran out of money. So and usually that's our issue. For us in, in my world, it's not what we need to do. It's what we can afford to do, which begins to be very little after that. So the goal is to knock down the infection and to strengthen your immune system. That's right. Those of us with Lyme for a while, our immune system is really wacky. In some instances, our immune system is reacting to everything. Yeah. Everything. On the other hand, it's reacting to nothing. So you need a really good doctor who understands the immune system because it could be dangerous to try to hype it up or lower it down for some of us. Uh, again, we need a support system. We want to become a bad host. We want to do whatever we can for our bodies to not be a good host. We have to understand it is a long haul. Those of you who live with people with Lyme disease, it's a long haul for them too. The caregiver needs a good support person because I said, it's very difficult to live with us. Um, yeah. uh, I'm almost done. So if you, if you need to go, go ahead. But if you can hang in there. Again, in the middle there it says eyelads is a good place. If you're concerned you might have Lyme or a loved one has Lyme, start on a calendar writing things down. As I said, symptoms one day are different another day and different another day, but if you're writing them down, you'll start to see a pattern. It's very good. If you have a good doctor, they'll want to look at that because those patterns are very important to diagnosis. Um, you're going to have to find support. You're going to have to research. You're going to have to self-advocate. And if you're the caregiver, you're going to have to advocate for that sick person. And God bless you, because that's a huge role. That's right. Because um, a lot of the, uh, you know, many times I was given up on, but my husband kept saying, if you found something and you want to check into it, I'm all with you. What a gift to have my husband stick with me on that's that right. until we finally found it. Um, in the middle, it's Rainbow Pest Experts. They have a neat tutorial, and you can find that online. And again, the link is at mnlime.org. And at the bottom, Rick Dahlman, who is here in the summertime, he's in this area, he is another speaker for the Minnesota Lyme Association, mm -hmm. and he has a presentation on avoiding ticks and tick-borne diseases. And if you want to know more scientifically about ticks, Rick is the right guy. 
And um, he's, uh, again, a speaker, so if you're involved in any organizations where you'd like a speaker to come out and talk about ticks, Rick would be a great person, and you can contact him through the Minnesota Lyme Association. Um, I won't go in, I, this is all good, but I won't go into it. Um, we're making some progress just recently. The guidelines that your doctors have been going by is something through the IDSA, <coughs> which is outdated information. The newest treatment no. that is out there, the treatment guidelines, is through the ILADS guidelines. And your doctor may not be aware of this yet. If you go in and you have an acute case and you're getting your antibiotics, don't settle for anything less than 21 to 28 days. And if your doctor says, hey, you know, here's two pills, then you can look them in the eye and say, excuse me, doctor, but I believe the life cycle of the Borrelia spirochete is four weeks long. So can you tell me absolutely that those two pills will make sure to kill off all the organisms in me if it's a four week life cycle? So it only makes sense, doesn't it make sense to you? If it's a four week life cycle, you wanna get it covered minimally 21 days to 28 days. And if you wanna go in there farmed, again, you can go to Minnesota or mnline.org and you can go to the link and it has the new guidelines there and you can print that up and bring it to your doctor. Your doctor. Just yeah. do it anyway, bring it in and drop it off and just let them know, hey, did you know? And the National Guideline Clearing House, which the doctors would all go, oh, because mm. that means a lot to them. Right now, the only treatment guidelines on there are these, the new ones. Oh, so good. you're empowered to let them know. And if they don't know, they need to know because they're seeing a lot of people come in their door with Lyme disease. So they need to know. And we have a moratorium through the Minnesota Lyme Association that has worked hard to have a moratorium. Uh, so legally covering our doctors to treat Lyme disease. And these kind of sound silly, like why would you need that for a doctor to treat? Well, because it's political and there are states um, I know of somebody being refused treatment right now in Iowa right here, uh, because the doctor's <laughs> afraid of litigation and losing That's their license right. because they're treating Lyme disease. And I, I won't go into that right now. But right top now in the state of Minnesota, we have it by law that the doctor can treat you for Lyme disease. So you need to know that. You need to remind your doctor of it. And you need to know we have new wonderful guidelines and they're the only ones out there right now. So your doctor can be empowered through they you. They still denied me three times. Okay, and this is my thank you. And um, if you're on Facebook, I have a professional page. It's Cynthia Datesburg, RN, FCN. I made it real simple. <laughs> So you can remember it, but, um, but I'm always popping up information on there for a number of chronic diseases, but particularly for Lyme disease, and you can contact me through there. Um, the, the Lord led me to put down things that I was learning, and it ended up becoming a book, much to my surprise. It's, it's actually can help anybody um, with a number of chronic illnesses because it's not telling you what to do, but the main purpose was to try to encourage and to try to help you walk through on how to develop your own care plan. Because I can tell you my care plan, but it's not gonna help you. That's it's right. more important for anyone with any chronic condition to develop their own care plan, so that's what that's about. Um, again, um, I have the privilege of serving with the Minnesota Lyme Association. I'm a board member there. If you have information that you think I should need to know about or our board needs to know about, let us know. Again, we have speakers that are available to come and do presentations. It would not be this. This is not one of theirs. This is my own presentation. But they have a presentation, like I said, Rick does on ticks. And they have another one through Dr. Maloney, which gives a little bit more of the medical end of things. So uh, again, if you have an organization that would want to invite them. Okay, I'll quit. Now I know it's really late, but does anybody have a question? Yeah. I was told years ago that you could pour gasoline on a tick bite. Oh, no. true or false? No. False. I would not do that. Is there anything you can pour on it? No. Um, well, what is the, are you looking to get the tick off yeah. or to kill? <coughs> to get the tick off, I think the, the best thing is to, again, get on, as far down as you can and no pop that thing out. And get as much as, it, as much out as you can. If it's embedded, you need to go in and have it. it removed in the office so that they do it aseptically. 
so you're not spreading the disease around any more than, than um, you can. Um, you don't want to put something over there that's going to cover it, cover it and plug it up. Like a puncture wound, you don't want to co cover that up. That would be the same kind of thing. So this is like a puncture wound. So, and I know some people like to take the tick off and then light it on fire, but it's, now you're handling it. You might as well put it on the ticker tape and save it in case you need it. So, but again, wash your hands well after handling them. Anything else? You guys have been so very patient. <laughs> I could go on. Okay, you guys are good?